All right, today we're going to cover some of the features of the VAST software. Initially, this is the live client view. Once you're logged into the live client, this is the initial layout. Some of the stuff you'll notice here on the top right corner is the username, station name, and the current times. Down below that is the layout of all the cameras. In this view here, we see 32 boxes. We can change that around to a 2x2 two two or any one of these configurations. We're going to use 2x2 two two in this example. So first, let's get started off by inserting some cameras. To do that, we'll go to Configuration, Camera Management, and let's do a Batch Insert. On the Batch Insert page, we'll obviously do a search find some of these cameras. In this case, we'll just select them all for now. Hit OK. And we can see that there are some issues with some of the cameras because they are password protected. So in this case, we can put the username and password for the cameras, which I know. And we can even apply to all cameras. Now that the status is OK for all of these cameras, we can hit insert but before we do that we notice that the default recording storage location is set to none meaning that we will not be recording initially So let's go ahead and do that All right, now that all the cameras are successfully added we can close this window close this as well here we see some of these cameras located here. On the left side we can drop down all the cameras that we want to see and we can double click to insert a camera. If it's already inserted we can drag and drop it into the box that we want. We can even drag and drop boxes in between each other to switch locations of the layout. You can double click on a single box to have it as a single unit and one nice feature that we included with the vast software is picture-in-picture -picture or digital zoom in this case we'll highlight the area that we want to view and it will show a digital zoom of that image in this bottom right corner we can adjust where we want to view and we can adjust the size as well To close out of the picture in picture, we simply right click on the image and disable the PIP. Now we can go back to the quad screen view by just double clicking again. And if you want to go to a bigger layout, we can do that as well to show more cameras. Again, we can just simply drag and drop these cameras into the location. Log down at the bottom just shows you what cameras are connected. It shows you if any events occur, any triggers occur. On the left side here, we can control the movement of the camera. If it's a PTZ camera, we will see the, in this case, we will see the mechanical PTZ controls. For a megapixel camera, we can do a digital PTZ control. Let's find a megapixel camera. Now let's go ahead and go into the recording storage groups. Meaning, let's go set up our recording. So go to configuration, station settings, and recording storage settings. By default, the default group does not have a recording path. So let's go ahead and add one. You can select from various hard drives. 
we'll just select the C drive for now. And we can see that there's two gigs of reserve space, meaning that this hard drive will always reserve two gigabytes of storage for whatever you need. Once you hit OK, now we can select cameras to be within that storage group. So now we put these three cameras inside the default recording group, which is recording to the C drive. Once we hit apply, it's going to insert those cameras into the storage group. And we can see that here as well. So now, underneath the storage group, the default group, will have three cameras that we inserted. Now you can set up the scheduling, or you can manually record through here as well. Now let's say you want to record some hard drives to a different hard, or some cameras to a different hard drive. You can do that by just adding an additional group. Now inside this group, we obviously need to select another location. In this case, we'll use the E drive and record some other cameras to that location. So now we're recording a few cameras to one hard drive and another one, another few cameras to another hard drive. Another feature with the VAS software is station management, meaning the hierarchical structure. We can insert other servers, whether it's ST7501 or VAS servers in here. So I'm going to go ahead and insert one of these servers. Now we see that it's listed underneath here. So now the server is shown here, and we can pull video feeds from that server as well. So whether that server is remote or local. As long as the bandwidth is available for the video feed, we can pull that as well. Now you can add as many of these remote stations as you want as long as the license permits now I'm going to show you one other quick feature which is the EMAP feature the EMAP allows us to create a digital map or layout for the station so let's go ahead and try to upload a map I don't think I have any real schematics so I'm just going to upload a picture for now So now we're going to edit this picture. And let's say we want to put some cameras. Assuming this is a schematic of the building, we can drag and drop cameras into specific areas of that building or the schematic. We can drag and drop the inputs or output triggers. As you can see, there's some motion being detected on this camera, and it automatically popped up the live view. Now let's start recording on one of these cameras so we can go back into the playback software and see what happens.
Well, that's it for the live client configuration. Obviously, there's a lot more features that we didn't go through, but feel free to call us and ask us if you have any other questions.